Good morning, HFA. If you'll stand with us this morning, we're going to praise the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious morning, God. We pray, Lord God, that you would come down and inhabit the praises of your people. We love you, God. We come to magnify your name this morning, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I saw Satan fall like lightning. And I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. And I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. My praise belongs to you forever. story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony oh praise your name Jesus come together sons and daughters bought with blood and washed in water praises of the spirit son and father our god will finish what he started our god will finish what he started this is my testimony from death to life because grace rewrote my story i'll testify by jesus christ the righteous i'm justified this is my testimony my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony hallelujah oh we praise your name Lord if I'm not dead you're not done greater things are still to come
Father. There's nothing better than you, Lord. This morning, if you need prayer, our prayer partners will be coming forward. And if you need prayer, this is a good opportunity to meet with someone to stand in faith with you this morning. Anytime you need prayer in the song, just come down. They'd be happy to pray with you this morning. Amen. spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me So, so
overwhelming Father your love is overwhelming we thank you for that
there's a wall before us this morning. Maybe we're just trying to push through, but there's no action. There's nothing. You're just like, you're just digging your wheels deeper and deeper. Can I tell you this morning that we serve a God that is undefeated. We serve a God this morning that takes down those giants. We serve a God this morning that blows through those walls. So as the worship team leads us back through this song, if you have a giant, hear me out. If you have a wall, don't do it in your seat. Come to the altar and let the God we serve that is undefeated bust through that wall and take that giant out. This is your opportunity to step out in faith and allow God to show up in your life this morning. Every crashing down, I have been.
a minute, I want to pray. I want to join my faith with those that were down here, and we're really believing that God showed up, and he took down some giants, and he busted through some walls, but I want you to look at one thing real quick. Well, they took it down. Can you put that last slide back up real quick? I want you to look at one, two, three, four, the fifth sentence, I am who you say I am. Who are you? Are you who others or your circumstances say you are, or are you who Jesus says you are? Our God says you are nothing less nothing less sometimes the enemy will get in our head and he'll try to make us think that we are less than who we're called to be and here's the fun thing about that and I'm telling you from experience you can try to live the best life you can but until you live the life Christ chose you to live you're gonna fail every time go ahead and give God a, a praise offering this morning thank you Jesus. Father, this morning we come together as a united corporate body and we, we join our faith together with those that were here beseeching you on their behalf to tear down those walls and bust down those giants. And God, we know that you are a God who is undefeated and you are a God who, who listens to your children and you come like a, like a father does to his babe. And Father, we right now thank you for that and we, we bind the enemy in the name of Jesus. Whatever he is trying to hold you back from, Whatever he is saying you are that you are not, we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You are who your Father says you are. And today, God, let us get that instilled and ingrained in not just our mind, but our heart and our spirit. Let us leave here today, not now, but later on, let us leave different than we came because we serve a God that changes us. He is unchanging, but he changes us. And we thank you for that. And we give you the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And the church said, amen and amen. You may be seated. Worship team, thank you very much. You guys were awesome this morning. Here we are Sunday morning again. It's still the summer and it's okay. People are out making the last minute trips and all that stuff. But now's the time where we transition to taking up the Lord's tithe and offering. We have these black boxes around the four pillows in here. Pillars, not pillows. Pillars in here that you can give your offering now or you can give it later or you can do it on the app, Easy Tithe, and you can text it in, which is real easy, or you can set it up to concurrently do it at the same time every month, real easy. Or you can go online and click the button, it'll lead you straight to Easy Tithe. But next, we're going to have something very special here, the video this morning. Sing 
no place to hide this weary soul This bag of bones And I try with all my might But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond
Thank you. Thank you for letting us dance. Don't you know they had a great time? Yeah. yeah. So, hey, I just want to thank all the parents who went. I know you got to go to Universal Studios or whatever one day, but, man, thank you for going and supporting our kids and being with them and walking with them and um, all of those kind of great things. I tell you what, it just it was an amazing trip, and, and I just want to thank the church for putting up with all the fundraisers. Right? Yeah, come on. <clears throat> All right, so this morning we are going to um, finish our series on Romans chapter 8, and we're going to look at chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 31 through 39. There are so many great one liners in this portion of Scripture. I, I could just let them preach themselves. I, honestly, I could just read them and that would be good enough. But there are a few things I want to say about um, some of them. And the title of the message, If God is For Us, how many of you know God is for you? He's for every single one of us. He wants all of us to win. He wants all of us to do better. He wants all of us to walk in victory. He is for us. Okay, so let's read Romans chapter 8, verse 31 through 39. If you've got your Bible, you want to open it up, that's great. If you've got your iPhone or your iPad or whatever, we've got the scriptures up on the screen. If you want to follow along up there, um, we'll, we'll let you do that. So Romans chapter 8. Verse 31 says this, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing 
shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Wow. Isn't that just powerful? I mean, just reading those verses of Scripture, that's why Romans chapter 8 is one of my favorite chapters in all of the Bible. And I hope after this series, it becomes one of your favorite chapters too. And you just learn to live in it, learn to study it, learn to read through it over and over and over again. Commit it to memory. Commit those verses to, to memory and let them speak to you when things aren't going good. Let them, let them speak to you when you're, when you're facing a giant or, or you're looking at a wall that you can't bust down or walk through or, or whatever. Let these verses of Scripture, not just the ones we read today, but the whole eighth chapter of Romans speak to you and minister to you. I guarantee you uh, it will. So number one, we're going to look at who is against us. Who is against us? Verse 31 says, what shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Paul is not claiming as Christians we won't face opposition because we certainly will. I mean, all of us have lived long enough to recognize that, haven't we? All of us have, have lived long enough to experience that truth. As a matter of fact, he has already told us that we will face opposition. In, in, instead of, he is saying that in response to the opposition we face, we can boldly declare to that opposition, you are defeated. You have been beaten by one who is undefeated. Just like the song we sang earlier, one who is undefeated. I'm going to mess some of you up, but, but look, every time I sing that phrase, undefeated, I think of Granny from the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> How many of you know who Granny from the Beverly Hillbillies is? Oh, hey, I'm, yeah. For those of you who don't know, the Beverly Hillbillies is an old black and white um, sitcom that came on every week, and it was, it was, I watched it in reruns, so that tell you how old it really is. So I, my, my youngest son, Matthew, he's probably five one time, and he's sitting in the living room floor watching an old black and white movie, and he turned and looked at me just as serious as he could be. He goes, Dad, was everything black and white when you were a kid? Meaning the whole world. I said, no, we had color. Anyway, this is an old black and white sitcom. So Google it, watch it, stream it. I don't care what you do, but you got to go watch Granny on the Beverly Hillbillies. So once she's talking to the banker who's the, the nemesis in the, in the, in the series, she's, she's talking to him and she boldly declares, we are part of the USA. And everybody pauses and looks at her. She goes, the undefeated Southerners of America. Okay, you didn't get that. All right, so every time I sing the phrase undefeated, that's what I think of. Granny declaring undefeated Southerners of America. Probably messed that up for all of you. But anyway, so, so here's what we got to say to our opposition. You are defeated. You've been beaten by the Lord. It may not look like it yet. It may not feel like it yet. We, we may not be able to see the victory. We may not even be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I can assure you this, God has promised us the victory and the victory will be ours. If God is for us, who can be against us? And even if they are against us, what does it matter? Because they're going to lose because God is with God on our side, who can be against us? Well, here's what the rest of that verse says. God gave his son so that we could be assured of victory. That's letter A. God gave his son. He who did not spare his own son, verse 32, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all Thing. So here's the truth of the matter. God being for us is, as, is seen as in God giving us his son, which assures us that he will give us all things and that nothing can defeat us. So, so here's what we got to believe. We just got to simply state the fact 
that if God is for us, who can be against us? And then we got to believe down in our heart, down in our spirit, Pastor James said. We got to get it way down within our, down in our knower. We got to get it down in our knower that God has ultimately won every battle we face. He has ultimately won it. He's ultimately given us the victory over those things. In other words, God sending his son was the ultimate expression of him being for us. It was the ultimate expression of God being for us. And that is our assurance that nothing can ever defeat us. Nothing can ever defeat us. Paul then uh, then shifts to God's eternal commitment and his love towards us. The certainty of our triumph is secured in God's love for us, which cannot be taken from us. More on that in just a second. But then he goes on to say, letter B, we are justified. In verse 33, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Well, we even sing, sang that this morning. One of the phrases, one of the songs that we sing, God justifies. Well, what does justifies mean? Listen to me very carefully. Justification is an act of God where he declared those who've received Jesus Christ as righteous. It doesn't mean that they've earned righteousness. It means that righteousness has been given to them apart from anything that they have done to deserve it. So this whole justification process that we go through, it is God the Father looking down at us. And when he looks at us, he looks through the blood of Jesus and he sees us as justified. One old evangelist said it like this, justification means just as if I had never sinned. I love that definition. I love it. But we're going to go a little bit deeper this morning talking about justification. Romans chapter 4 verse 5 says this, but to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Verse 6 says, but just as David also described the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works, blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven. That's you and I. Our lawless deeds, all of our sins have been forgiven by Jesus and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. So we're talking about talking about justification. He who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Whose faith? The Lord's faith? God's faith? No, our faith. Our faith. So here's how that all works. Here's how it all looks. As we express faith in the gift of Jesus and what he did for us on Calvary over 2,000 years ago gave his life for us, shed his blood for us. When we express faith in that, God counts that faith as righteousness. I look at my life. It's been anything but righteous. It's been anything but holy. It's been anything but good. But Jesus counts it as righteousness the moment I express faith in him. Did you see that? Your faith. Your faith in Jesus is counted for righteousness. Now, justification is more than a pardon for your sins. Justification is more than an acquittal. You see, listen, if you and I go into a courtroom today and the courtroom said you are guilty, but we pardon you, that wouldn't be justification. Or if the courtroom said, ah, you are acquitted, that means you were never guilty to begin with. But justification means this. Not only are you pardoned, but that God now by a forensic act of his love and his divine righteousness declares you righteous. There's a difference between being guilty and being forgiven and being declared unguilty. That's justification. 
That's what God is saying to us, to every believer, to every child of God who has ever expressed faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are justified. We have been made pure and righteous and, and holy because of his love and his divine righteousness, apart from works of any kind. Not because you've been a good boy, not because you've kept the Ten Commandments, not because you've gotten baptized, but because you have trusted in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That's it. That's simply it. That's the truth of the gospel. Because we have trusted in Jesus, we are declared righteous. Now, look in Romans chapter 5, verse 9. What's the basis of this justification, it's the blood of Jesus. Romans chapter five, verse nine. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. The only way that you and I could ever be justified is through the blood of Jesus. There's no other way. There's no other means. There's no other action on the planet. By anyone who has ever lived, by anyone who has ever taken a breath, they cannot save you. They cannot redeem you. It's only through the blood of Jesus. You cannot receive it by your own good deeds. You can't receive it by your own emotions, by your own intuition, by your own anything. Can we justify ourself. Friend, if you could be saved any other way, then Jesus would have never needed to die. His blood would have never needed to be shed. He would have never needed to sacrifice his life. Your sin will be pardoned in Christ or punished in hell, but it'll never be pardoned and you'll never be justified apart from the blood of Jesus. We've got to acknowledge that. We've got to know that. How does justification become effective? When you trust Jesus. One more verse. Romans chapter 3 verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It's simply grace, friend. It's the grace of God that saves us. It's the grace of God that redeems us. It's the grace of God that justifies us. It's the grace of God that took Jesus to a cruel uh, Golgotha's cross. It's the grace of Jesus. All right, then number three, Jesus Christ is praying for us. He's praying for me. He's praying for you. Verse 34, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God. I want you to picture that. God the Father sitting on his throne in heaven and Jesus right there at the right hand side of God the Father who also makes intercession for us. You know what that means? That means Jesus is praying for us. We have great scriptures in the Bible of the prayers of Jesus. We have, we have the Lord's, what we call the Lord's Prayer. You know, our Father who art in heaven, that whole thing. That, but what he was really, he was giving us an example. This is how you should pray. And then we have, we have John chapter 14, John chapter 15, and John chapter 16. The Son of God praying for all the disciples and praying for those who are far off. That's you and I praying for all of us. We, we have those great prayers in those verses of, of Scripture. We have other places. Jesus prayed for other people and, and he brought healing. Listen, Jesus is making intercession for you and I today, right now, right this moment. If you, if you and I could, could hear the prayers that Jesus is praying for us, that would be phenomenal, right? That'd be great. That'd be powerful. Well, how many of you know, if we could learn how Jesus prays for us and we would learn to pray the way Jesus is praying for us, that's got to be answered, right? I mean, that's got to be answered on the affirmative. I mean, not just a no or a wait or a maybe, but that's got to be God the Father saying, all right, I'll grant that prayer. So, so if we learn how Jesus is praying for us, then, then great things are going to happen because listen, he is praying for you right now, right this moment. How does he pray for everyone on the planet? I don't know. That's a God thing. We're not given clear direction on that in the scripture, but here's what we know. He is making intercession for us. That's you and I. 
That's all of us. That's every one of us. He is, he's praying for us on a regular, daily basis. And, and you, we got to understand that what Jesus prays will be answered. Number two, who will separate us? Verse 35 says this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Listen, there are things that will try to separate you from the love of Jesus. There are things. There are things that will sneak in. There are things that will, that will happen, that will try, will try, will try to separate you from the love of Jesus. Trouble. We talked about giants earlier. We talked about walls standing in our way. Those things will try to separate you from the love of Jesus. But here's what we know. Nothing shall separate you. Oh, I got ahead of myself. Hang on. We're going to cover that in a second. Verse 37 says, yet in all these things, all these things, all the walls, all the giants, all the trouble, all the diseases, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Wow. We are more than conquerors. We read about great conquerors in history. We read about Attila the Hun. Anybody know who that is? He led the Mongolian nation. They, at one time, it, in fact, during his day, they were the largest land nation in the world. I mean, they had conquered great nations because of his, because of his warlike abilities. In fact, I read a, a biography on Attila the Hun. Here's what he would do. A year before he would invade a nation, he would send armies in and they would kill all of the animals in the field. They'd kill all the cows, all the deer, everything that ate grass, they would, they would kill them all. Not people, but they'd kill all the stuff. They'd kill all their livestock, all of those kind of things. So why? So when they rode their horses in, there would be plenty of grass to feed their horse. I mean, this guy was smart. He conquered lands beyond anything imaginable, but then he died at 37 years old. 37. We read about Alexander the Great. Same thing. Conquered the world. He said, it was said of Alexander the Great that one day he sat down and wept because there was no more land to conquer. I mean, can you imagine? Well, he died very young too, very young as well. We read about Napoleon. We read about Hitler. We read about all these men who tried their best to conquer the world. Here's what we know about them. Every single one of them has passed. They've all died. They no longer exist. We read about their stories. We hear their history. We understand they were great or whatever. They were great at doing what they, <coughs> what they did. But Jesus said, as good as those conquerors are, we're more than a conqueror. We're never going to be defeated. We're never going to be beaten. Yeah, one day we're going to face the grave unless Jesus returns. But listen, but listen, in this life, we are more than Attila the Hun. We are more than Alexander the Great. We are more than Napoleon. We are more than them because we will never be defeated. We are more than a conqueror through him who loved us. All right, number three. Here's a list of the things, a list of the things that will separate us from the love of God. Verse 38 says this, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So you ready for this list? Here's the list of things that will separate us from the love of God. 
Ready? I've worked hard on it. Ready to write it down? All right, here you go. I used to have a friend that would quote that verse of scripture and he would say, nothing can separate you from the love of God but sin. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, the Bible says, the word of God declares, nothing, nothing, nothing will separate you from the love of God. Nothing. My sin? No. Your sin? No. Nothing. He loves you regardless. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible declares. Nothing. It doesn't matter what you did last night. It doesn't matter what you did this morning. It does not matter. Nothing will separate you from the love of God. So here's What does all that mean? Bottom line, friend, if we have put our faith in Jesus, he's taken our sins and he's placed them on the Lord Jesus. You can be absolutely sure. Absolutely sure. Totally Sure. I don't know if I can say that any more clear. We can be absolutely sure. He cannot fail. He must prevail. We can be sure. God loves us. He gave his son to die for us. And that takes care of all of our issues. And Father, I just come in the name of Jesus today. Lord, we celebrate you. We thank you, God, for all that you've done for us, how you've redeemed us, how you've justified us, how you've declared us righteous. Lord, we we honor you. We, We could never, ever, ever achieve that without your gift to us. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the gift of your son. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing your life to be taken, your blood to be shed so that we could be redeemed. We could be made whole. We could be made well. Father, we just, we want to thank you from the bottom of our heart. Lord, I pray for everyone in this room, God, Those who are struggling with this fact, God, I pray you just, you confirm it to them. Lord, you just make it real to them. Father, you just, you become our Father, our Lord, our our Savior, our King. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for making it real to our heart to our life, for changing us, for helping us to know that you are the unchanging God. We can trust you. Amen. Because he's trustworthy. Amen. 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 Come on, bless him with me this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. God bless you all. You're dismissed. Thank you guys for joining us for this week's service. If you asked Jesus to come into your heart or you rededicated your life, we want to know about it. So stay connected with us on our website. You'll see it below the screen. You'll go to connect. You'll go to prayer request, whatever it is that you need. We want to stay connected with you. Fill out the connect card with all your information. We promise not to blow up your, your email with a junk mail or anything like that or call you or send you out mass text. We just want to know your information in case you need us. Um, We are here for you. 
So we can't wait to see you guys next week. Please join us.